Alright, so today, guys, we got the Witch Queen Interactive trailer. Uh, let's get started. Guardian, to defeat your enemy, first you must know them. The rise of Savathun is a tale of deceit, of power corrupted, and the truth bent to serve various ends. In this interactive trailer, you'll learn everything the Vanguard knows about history of Savathun and her rise to power. Be sure to click on the notes that appear throughout the video for additional crucial intel. As you prepare to take up arms against the Witch Queen and her lucent brood, remember even the smallest insight into your foe could be the key to taking back the light. Alright, so I'm gonna play the video and then go through the notes. In times of crisis, people look to their leaders for answers. But ever since the planets were ripped from our sky, it seems all I can offer are more questions. I hardly know where to start. Savathun, the Witch Queen. Hive God of Cunning and Lies. Hive legend tells us she was born on a hostile, far-off planet, where she would have lived a short, uneventful life. If it weren't for the worm familiar that warned of an impending cataclysm. And so, she led her siblings into the depths, where the ancient worm gods offered them immeasurable power in exchange for endless blood tribute. From this, the Hive were born, and countless civilizations were condemned to extinction. For untold ages, they devoured life and light wherever it could be found facing little resistance. After the death of her brother Oryx, Savathun went into hiding. Not out of fear, of course, but out of strategy. Because Savathun knows the best way to beat your enemy is to join them. In her greatest trick yet, she infiltrated the Vanguard, weakening us from within and stealing our most sacred resource. The one thing we thought she could never touch. The light. The questions just keep piling up. It seems the answers are buried within Savathun's throne world. I need someone to go in and dig them up. Savathun's throne world is a nexus of power. I'd be shocked if her brood didn't exploit that as often as possible. If my instincts are correct, this ability could be just what we need to solve this case. Remember, Guardian, Savathun's strategy rests on knowing more than anyone else. On her ability to twist lies and cast confusion. But now, we can turn the tables on her. Alright, so that was good. I like that. I'm going to go back through and inspect and read all of the notes. Fundament. It was an inhospitable gas giant and the birthplace of the proto-hive species eons ago. They were a weak, defenseless species having to contend with poisonous rain, toxic oceans, and predators, such as storm joys, living clouds that lower deadly tentacles tipped with bait stars to entice their prey. With such a hostile environment, it is no wonder that the ancestors of the hive were so desperate to find ways to survive. So that rhymed. Also, it sounds very sci-fi. I, I, I really do like this. It's, it's nice. So, next up, we got Worm Gods. Diving into the depths of the fundament, the Proto-Hive made a terrible covenant with Worm Gods Akka, Ir, Yul, Ur, and Zal. Each member of the Hive lives in symbiosis with a worm larva, which grants them darkness-based powers in exchange for being fed, quote-unquote fed, with a constant supply of violence and destruction. But in this pact lies the Hive's greatest weakness, for as the worm feeds, it grows in power and hunger. And if a hive fails to satisfy its worm, the hungry parasite will devour its own host instead. Sounds terrifying. 
the wilderness years. During her years in hiding, Savathun found even more devious ways to destroy her enemies to, and amass power. She gained strength through a curse on the Woken Stronghold, the Dreaming City, where a time-looping battle feeds her endless tribute. On the moon, she convinced the granddaughters of Oryx to build and defend the Scarlet Keep Fortress, knowing it would lure the Guardians, who would then destroy what remained of her brother's bloodline. The Taken King Oryx, the Taken King, was a brother to the Witch Queen, Savathun. After killing the worm god Akka, Oryx learned the power to take, an ability that allowed him to bend the other beings to his will. After the death of his son, Crota, Oryx came to Saul to seek vengeance on the Guardians, but they defeated him within the Ascendant Plane, thereby destroying him and ending his reign forever. Ooh, what is this? I tried to protect you from the Black Fleet. You called it interference. Interference. The arrival of the pyramid ships drew Savathun out of hiding to interfere with her signal. She objects, however, to the implication of obstruction, claiming that she was merely protecting humanity. Whether she was or not remains unclear, but her meddling did leave something tangible on Io, the Tree of Silver Wings, a mysterious entity that embodied both the light and the darkness. Harris Morn studied the tree for clues on its paracausal heritage, but sadly, her investigation abruptly ended when Io, like many moods of the planet Saul, suddenly disappeared. I tried to protect you from the Black Fleet. You called it interference. Osiris. He is a legendary warlock and a controversial figure among humanity due to his teachings and research. He notably discovered the infinite forest and helped to save the titan Saint-14 from almost certain death. Much later, when Osiris seemingly betrayed the last city by conspiring to destroy the House of Light, it was revealed that Savathun had been posing as the famed warlock to spread sedation. When I lived as Osiris, I saw you. I've always been a student of humanity, but to live among you was a new delight. That is freaky. Savathun in prison. Prior to her theft of the light, Savathun was captured and imprisoned in a crystalline structure by Mara Sav, the Awoken Queen. Savathun struck a bargain with Mara, remove her worm, and Savathun would return as the real Osiris and lend her assistance against the Black Feet. Mara accepted knowing that she would have a chance to kill Savathun upon separation from her worm, but Savathun has never been one to let others decide her fate. Lost Guardian It's unclear how Savathun has stolen the light, but one theory pervades. Some years ago, a fire team led by Exo Warlock Taiko 3 traveled to the New Pacific Archaeology on Titan to stop a hive summoning ritual. They failed, and the hive, led by a streaker known as Savathun Song, killed the fire team and transformed them into crystals containing void light. Such access to an aspect of the light may have given Savathun the opportunity to seize a newfound power. But like so much with Savathun, this remains merely hearsay. Throne World, the seat of her power. Savathun's throne world is haunting, surreal realm. There are two distinct regions, a darkness-infused area containing swampland and a pyramid ship, which reflects the past she claims to have left behind, and a surreal, newly light-transformed area home to her palace and gardens, which embodies the future she desires, a future the vanguard cannot allow to pass. Lucent Hive the fruits of Savathun's theft, also known as the Lucent Brood. These hive warriors are fiercely loyal to Savathun and use Traveler's Light to execute her destructive ends. Guardians who meet them will face solar-infused acolytes, wizards who shoot bolts of arc energy, knights who battle behind a sentinel shield, and hive ghosts capable of bringing them all back from the dead. Encountering such an enemy begs the question, how will Guardians defeat a foe armed with their own abilities. Deep Sight, a power derived from the darkness. Deep Sight allows a wielder to see through illusions of Savathun's throne world. Although its usage is deemed necessary, some guardians have their fears. The door to darkness was opened on Europa by embracing Deep Sight and inviting in another dark power. Will guardians ever be able to truly shut this door again? The light. It is more than just a guardian's power. It defines what makes a guardian special, their connection to the traveler, and at an even deeper level, their values of truth, honor, and valor. As such, Savathun's possession of it means more than just an enemy wielding a powerful new tool. It challenges everything a guardian thinks that they know about the universe and their place in it. Indeed, it invokes the most profound question of all, what makes a guardian a guardian? All right, so that seemed to be the video. That was actually really good. I uh, enjoyed that. Hope you did too. See you next time. Most man of the decade. Yep.
We get it. it homeless man of time periods. Now it sounds like yeah. he travels through time. This is weird. A time traveling homeless man. You never know. The name of this episode. Are, it's the name of this episode now. <laughs> time, time traveling homeless man. A man of time traveling, but he was homeless. 